Hello from Black Knights Film Festival. We are in our precious main competition where uh, we have uh, this year 23 films, only international and world premieres. For some of films, we uh, had to fight to get them, to convince them. And Hit Big is uh, uh, such a film. And I'm really proud to present today Yuka Pekka Valkapa and his Hit B uh, Big. Happy to be here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and uh, I always admired your previous films, your second film, uh, they have escaped, I uh, saw in Venice. And uh, at that time, I was not involved in programming of Black Knights, but it was in competition, and Black Knights still had no A class. And uh, then you uh, you was uh, selected for Director's Fortnite, with Dogs Don't Wear Pants, and you co-produced that film with Latvia, and uh, now hit big your second co-production with Estonia. But uh, uh, your screenplay is entirely fictional, but uh, I think there are some uh, real-life stories, right? In your uh, especially uh, with fin uh, Finnish people mm. in Spain. Could yeah. you could you say something about your inspiration while writing? Yeah, the, I mean, the con ton context is, is kind of factual. Uh, lots of Finns have moved to Costa del Sol uh, and especially uh, to Fuengirola. And um, the route for this is in the, in the 60s when this kind of group uh, trips to the and Girola and Costa del Sol started, Finns started traveling there. And before that, uh, this kind of, this type of tourism was, um, was not. So, so um, uh, then, uh, I mean, in Fuengirola, there are several of these, uh, uh, s s uh, I think there are, German communities mm -hmm. and and, um, and British uh, British have moved there and then there, there are quite a quite a few Finns living there and they have their own newspaper their own bars and, and restaurants and even school mm. and um, it fascinated me this kind of uh, Finnish world, this kind of, um, you, uh, for the lack of, of a better word, you could, uh, a bubble that they have created there. And also uh, Costa del Sol, because of, of its uh, criminality, which is re real, I mean, it's, it's a big drug harbor uh, for Engirola, and um, there are uh, what I've been following in newspapers and and uh, d different publications, I, I started researching about these Finnish criminal criminals in these um, crime magazines that um, have been published in Finland. So a lot of this this kind of professional criminals um, take a retreat in in Fuengirola. Uh, so we may assume that protagonists of your film have some ties with maybe with uh, real personalities. Very, very mm -hmm. uh, sort of thin, mm -hmm. thin ties. And, and you mentioned uh, that your leading lady protagonist, uh, you discovered her from a photo. Mm -hmm. uh, not really, mm -hmm. but the idea, mm -hmm. I, uh, the the kind of main character mm -hmm. I discovered from from a photograph uh, mm -hmm. of a sixty year old lady watching um, the bottom mm -hmm. of a of a cold um, pint of beer in a obviously cold February weather in Fuengirola roof terrace, mm -hmm. and it it was a photo sent me by a friend of mine, mm -hmm. and and I watched the photo and it shocked me. The, the look in the woman's eyes uh, seemed like she was seeing um, her past or present or future in the in the bottom of the beer pint. And um, then 
uh, I think that with, with this one it, it started uh, to bring alive these kind of characters uh, not so much the plot but these characters and then the characters actions started leading the plot mm -hmm. yeah and I must admit that in current cinema there are not so many films with uh, old ladies and mm. you give role to yeah. to to actresses to and this is actually uh, the, uh, if we compare your old filmography this is the biggest change mm. but your lead you have leading lady in your film yeah. and you also mentioned uh, what you got for this film actors whom you wanted yeah, so yeah. did you need a casting or you just invited uh, actors whom uh, you dreamed to film i i had casting um, but um, uh, these auditions uh, but, but two two actors uh, the mother and the son mm. uh, who are played by Oti Mampa and Johannes Holopainen uh, those two i was kind of certain of mm -hmm. so i just um, the producer actually called them and uh, asked that we have this kind of project would we be interested then we sent the script and i i talked with them for an hour or two and um, then that was it but the other other ones i i auditioned and i asked um maybe three to six uh actors that i knew that could bring something interesting to the role, uh, and and then I auditioned them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, co-production with Estonia, of mm. course, brought you Estonian actor. Yeah. You you wrote him a specific role. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, with, with Paro Oya, uh, what happened was that um, I think our product, I mean, I did the auditions already uh, over over a year before our shooting just out of the practical reasons that actors schedules are a nightmare <laughs> <laughs> usually they have these uh, theater um, uh, assignments where, where they are um, blo blocked from working in another project for a, half a year etc so um, there was no Estonian co-production at that moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, Daniel Kuitunen, the producer of the film, had met Paru uh, and heard good, uh, good comments about his work. And uh, he had a hunch that he could be good mm -hmm. in this role. So uh, I auditioned him. Yeah, he actually sent an audition tape this kind of self tape, and then I auditioned him with with Johannes Holopan, who was playing with Billy, and uh, yeah, I mean it. It was obvious from that audition that uh, he can kind of. This is an uh, American uh, idiom, <laughs> but uh, he, he could hold the screen, and and there was interesting things happening in in his eyes and. And all protagonists are uh, uh, unlikable. They are really dark with the alcoholics, bad uh, bad people. You don't want to meet them in real life, but they seem so attractive that you you feel like they uh, they are your friends. Mm. This is uh, probably the strongest part of your direction. You you make this manipulative human beings mm. who who are greedy uh, lie to themselves mm. uh, quite attractable <laughs> well I, I think they display also I mean the good side of humanity uh, w which I think is is r rarity uh, which is solidarity and, and empathy that they have and actually adaptability in a, in a way true the solidarity and, and uh, empathy that they they can change mm -hmm. and 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 sometimes the change is for a minute and and sometimes it seems that there's a lo 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 life changing moments f for these characters but it's I mean it's it's uh, I think it's just kind of 
on display of humanity. I, I've been thinking about this. Uh, what makes these drunkards repulsive? Mm. Why, why don't you you see a hobo, this kind of drunk hobo uh, on the street? That why why is it so painful to watch it? And through this film, I mean, I've noticed from the audience, people watching it, that some some find it that mm. uh, why are you showing this? I mean, this is part of humanity, this is part of life. But why is it hard? I think that it it's got to do a lot of with kind of. Uh, I mean, one part is obvious. I mean, it's like a um, uh, walking sign of of uh, of of lovelessness mm -hmm. uh, that nobody <laughs> cares about about this this Deep. person. Mm -hmm. So the lack of love is like screaming out there, mm -hmm. and it's horrible to watch. But the other thing that I've been thinking that is that if if we think that life life is kind of mm -hmm meaningless without uh, be, before we uh, give it meaning uh, uh, ourselves that 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 we have some some meaning for it. Uh, the dr drunk kind of shows that maybe there's no meaning <laughs> at all <laughs> and it's a horrible thought it's kind of a hor it's 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 our fear that makes us sort of um, repent these figures. Yeah, and you involve uh, your protagonists in crime adventures, which bring, uh, brings us to a thrilling uh, tempo of a film. But I, uh, JP, I think your signature is dark, morbid humor, which you include in every film. And that's why I, uh, how I admire you. This is my kind of humor. <laughs> and I'm really, really curious, when do you plan these jokes while, uh, while writing? You have them all written before you go to set? Or you, you, you still add jokes during filming and adapt to actors' uh, mm. abilities? It's, I mean, I, I, I was thinking about uh, Elmore Leonard and Will Ford and, and, and kind of that the, the humor is kind of organically mm in the tone of the film and the way of seeing the world. And uh, it's it's in the writing process that uh, s something feels funny, mm -hmm. something that it could be quite horrible. And it's, uh, I think that the, gr the greatest humor in my, my eyes uh, uh, comes from desperation. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you think Chaplin or Buster Keaton or Steve Martin or whatever, I mean, uh, to this day, uh, uh, I think that has been kind of, because it, it's something that we all can relate to. It can be very painful also to watch it, but there's something cathartic mm -hmm. about that, that it's a, it's a real inner experience, real experience that all of us, mm -hmm. or most of us, have had, and, and it it is good for us to laugh at it. Yesterday, I mean, I don't want to go to a too much spoilers, but there's the maybe the most horrible scene besides the dirtiness of the characters, which seems to horrify many, uh, this very violent scene. And I heard really loud laughter throughout the whole scene. <laughs> Uh, okay, <laughs> why not? <laughs> For me, this is really strongest, strongest scene in a film when you kill people and it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> and I wonder, JP, uh, do you have any references or, or maybe your favorite directors whom you follow? Although I think your uh, hit big is true, exceptionally original film. Uh, it's uh, the, there are mass, masses of fav favorites. Mm -hmm. I, I've been watching films um, since since my te teenage years, extremely actively. Not not so much in the in the last last years, but it's. I mean, I I owe to I think almost every filmmaker that whose whose films I've seen. But I mean. Uh, what I seem that 
uh, I come back to uh, a lot is, is um, Jonathan Dem, mm. which um, whose um, films have these uh, extreme kind of tonal dynamics, this very sweet human side, and then kind of he acknowledges the dark side also and the violence that is there, and they kind of live together in in his films, mm. and it's 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 one of my big favorites. Yeah, we we all know what uh, Quentin Tarantino is not only a director but great cinephile, and he watching he watches many films mm. of European directors. Mm. Did you hear anything what he requested for any any of your films to watch? <laughs> no. Any legend? <laughs> no, no, but. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's I mean, Tarantino was for me when I was a kid. He was kind of when I was a teenager. He was kind of the 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 director who initiated this kind of secret dream that maybe I could be a director because Tarantino was a video story. Everybody knows this story, yeah. and it seems that okay, if it's possible for him, yeah. it, it's possible for me. But anyhow, I, I loved Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction when I was a, a young young boy, and, and those sort of um, electrified uh, electrified the kind of um, dream in me to, yeah. to become to become a filmmaker. JP, thank you very much for trusting world premiere for Black Knights Film thank Festival. You. It ten minutes is always not enough to talk about such film, which takes, uh, which keeps you two hours in full tension, and we don't know what to expect. But I mentioned T Tarantino deliberately, and I, I want to wish, I hope, but Quentin Tarantino one day will discover it big, <laughs> and he will see it, and I hope to read what he thinks about it. Uh, I really, uh, I, now it's like a mission impossible to <laughs> convince Quentin Tarantino to see JP's newest film. And good luck with your next films. Thank you. Writings. And I hope one day you will co-produce with Lithuania. No, I, I hope that too. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you for listening to us here at Black Knights of uh, TV studio and you still have a chance to see Hit Big here in Tallinn or catch up with this incredible and unique crime thriller in other places and festivals or uh, I think uh, this film especially would be released in cinemas very soon. See you in other films of uh, Black Knights Film Festival. <laughs>